I wonder about existence, so much so, at times it hurts. I wonder about what's real, down deep real, matter, energy, space, time. Matter and energy are equivalent. Einstein discovered that. Each can transform into the other. The atomic bomb proved that. Einstein also showed that space and time were essentially the same thing, a single entity, space-time. Space-time? A single entity? That sounds incredible. Space and time seem so radically different. How could space and time be the same thing? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey to find out. I start at MIT. I visit my friend, physics professor Max Tegmark, who's not afraid to tackle big questions. Max is scientific director of the Foundational Questions Institute, FQXI, which dares to look beyond the known horizon. The deep nature of time is one of its targets. Max, Einstein's theory of relativity forces us to think of time and space as part of the same thing. How can we begin to understand that? If we think of uh, space the traditional way that the ancient Greeks and Euclid did, it was just a boring stage on which events unfolded over time, right? Whereas what Einstein said in his first special theory of relativity is that you shouldn't think of uh, all these frames one by one as something happening, but you should think of space-time as just the whole videotape. That's how I think of space-time. The whole story is just in there. And then his second theory, the general theory of relativity, he came up with this even more radical notion that, moreover, space isn't just static. Space-time is actually a mover and a shaker in the sense that space can shake. You can have these ripples called gravitational waves, which are just ripples in, in the fabric of space-time itself. Space can move away from other parts of space in a stretching, which is what we mean when we say the universe is expanding. And space can curve a little bit, where the curvature turns out to correspond to stuff, matter, and a lot corresponding to black holes. In other words, I think we've completely transformed our view of space-time as just being the boring static backdrop to being a very active participant in the universe. Now, is space-time something that's continuous, like a sheet of paper? Or could it be the way we think that matter is based on little tiny pieces of quantums? So according to Einstein, space was really continuous. You could zoom in as much as you want, and there would still be right. smoothness, and you could zoom more. Whereas if you take quantum theory seriously, that cannot be right. Because when you look on really teeny tiny scales, like 10 to the minus 34 meters, things are fluctuating in a wild and crazy sort of way. On one hand, we have this continuous space-time model, the theory of general relativity, which is a beautiful success in describing all things big. And at the same time, we have this quantum theory, which is, describes things as particles, discrete in a sense, which is fascinating, very, very successful for describing the micro world. Mm. And we can't quite get them to fit together. And in order to do so, we have to ultimately understand whether space itself is continuous or discrete, whether it's analog or digital in a sense. And the way to go about that is the search for quantum gravity. Is So if you can look at the universe itself when it was very young, because at some point in the past, it was so tiny, this region, and so dense that quantum gravity would have been necessary. And my guess is that the best clues we're going to be able to extract about quantum gravity to guide this are going to actually come from studying the infant universe. And so that becomes sort of our ultimate atom smasher. Exactly, because not only does the early universe smash particles together way, way harder than we've been able to do here on Earth, 
but this cosmic particle smasher has already been funded and <laughs> built. <laughs> right. Just need to look out into the sky and uh, get the data. We won't get into who, who did the funding and who, who, who did the building. <laughs> but uh, let's go back to the, the fundamental question of, of, this, of the unity of space-time because it is so counterintuitive to the way we live our world. And yet, in the physics, the only difference between space and time is a minus sign. If I think of um, a particle in space moving in this direction, which we'll think of as time, mm -hmm. instead of thinking of a thing moving, I can think of a spaghetti strand, you know, going in a straight line through space-time. Mm -hmm. If I have Earth and the Moon orbiting around it, this will make a spiral through space-time, kind of like a rotini. Mm -hmm. And if you have a really complicated thing like the solar system, that's a really messy mm -hmm. piece of pasta. But in, in the end, all the information is, of course, encoded just in the geometry of, of these patterns in space-time, mm. right? So in that sense, if you know what's in space-time, it's like you have the whole videotape of the universe. It's you, all in there. And if we take Einstein seriously about space-time, I think it also forces us to rethink death in the sense that when I was a little kid, I thought it's so horrible. When I die, I'm going to disappear somehow, and there's nothing left. Whereas... Uh, of course, if I think of myself as just this pattern in space-time, that's never going to go away, right? My death is just the end of the little spaghetti strand, and my birth was the other end. It's all there, and space-time is the fundamental thing. It's not space that's the fundamental thing. Do you mean that in, in something more than just a allegorical, metaphoric way? Yeah. I think this whole no feeling that the past just disappears is just an illusion. Because every little piece of our, our conscience, as we move along our, along our world line, will only remember its past and not its future. But the past is no less important, really, than, than our future. And uh, I think that gives a certain amount of consolation. That also means, though, that the future now exists in some way. Yes, it does. There are just no two ways about it. Space-time is the thing which exists. It's not stuff in space which exists. But, uh, yeah, I don't think the past is gone. <laughs> Fantastic as space-time is, I keep reminding myself that space-time is no parlor game. This unity is reality. The only difference between space and time is a minus sign? Everything exists as patterns in space-time? The past is not gone? And isn't time supposed to be the fourth dimension? How to make sense of all of this? Space-time starts with Einstein. So I need more Einstein. I go to Princeton to speak with Einstein expert, physicist J. Richard Gott. Einstein showed that the universe is really four-dimensional, that you can think of time as a fourth dimension. So we have three dimensions of space, uh, uh, length, breadth, height, and we have a dimension of time. So if I want to invite you to a party, I have to tell you the latitude and longitude on the Earth, where to go, how high to go mm -hmm. if it's on the 55th floor, you know. And then I have to tell you what time to show up, otherwise you'll miss the party. So there are four <laughs> coordinates and there are four dimensions. Mathematically, Einstein showed that there was a minus sign, mathematically, associated with the time dimension that made it different from the other mm. spatial dimensions. All this was in terms of every observer seeing the speed of light as a constant part of his hypotheses of, of relativity, that motion was relative and the speed of light was a constant. So mathematically, that's the difference. It's one four-dimensional sculpture. So if you imagine the sun sitting at the center of the solar system and time is going this way, you think of the sun as just a rod that extends in time. It's not going anywhere in space. And the Earth, its, it's path through space and time, it's like a helix that winds around the sun once a year. And it's just, it's just one helix. And nothing moves in the four-dimensional sculpture. <laughs> it's one four-dimensional thing that doesn't change. Some people call this block time. Mm -hmm. you know? 
Uh, and the interesting thing Einstein showed is that different observers traveling at different speeds through this loaf of bread, mm -hmm. this uh, time and space, um, they slice the space time differently. I, sitting on Earth, might slice it like American bread, like slices mm -hmm. like this. I say, this is one instant, this is the next instant. Two things happen simultaneously that are on the same slice. Mm -hmm. But an observer flying through this space-time at a different speed would see the same loaf, but he would want to slice it like French bread on a, on a, on a, on a slant. So he would say, uh, differ with me about which events were simultaneous. He'd say, these two events are simultaneous. I'd say, no, this event happens first and this yeah. event happens later. So, um, we're used to thinking in the Newtonian world of events either being simultaneous or not, but Einstein showed that observers can differ on which event occurred before which other event. Mm -hmm. It's all how this loaf is sliced, but there's one fundamental space-time that everyone can agree on, the loaf everyone can agree on. So we really live in a four-dimensional universe. And we still don't know why the universe looks to us like a movie, you know? I mean, the psychological perception of it. It's just a minus sign in front of the time direction that makes it different from the other dimensions. It's interesting to know that. All events ever, past, present, future, all existing, somehow, a four-dimensional block time universe is so startling that no matter what my physicist friends tell me, I'm reeling and skeptical. How can this be? Some think the key is string theory, which could grandly unify Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics in quantum gravity. Okay, string theory. For that, I head across Princeton to the Institute of Advanced Study, where Einstein himself walked and worked. I meet Juan Maldacena, whose deep discoveries in string theory brought him almost rock star fame. Juan, this term space-time has become very common among scientists, meaning an integration of space and time. Intuitively, that seems almost nonsensical. The, I think one of the most important ideas is the idea that space-time is not a static concept. It's not some background where particles move. Uh. It's not a stage where actors move, uh -huh. like uh, the particles are the actors that uh -huh. are talking, and the stage is fixed. Uh -huh. The stage is not fixed. The actors modify the stage. Uh, uh -huh. and so space-time is modified by particles. So when you have a heavy particle, it curves space-time. So space-time can be curved. Uh, if you shake a particle, it will emit a wave of space-time. So if, if space-time is a somewhat strange concept, a wave of space-time is also very strange. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, this theory is of uh, general relativity is called, it's a theory of gravity. It's also tested in many situations and um, we believe it's basically right. And so now we have space-time being uh, 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 relates to, to matter and that right. uh, matter curves space-time and right. space-time gives matter its, uh, its yeah. gravity. Yeah, it, it, gives, it gives matter the space in which it yeah. moves. Yeah. So the, the, where the matter moves uh, depends on what the matter is right. doing because it curves space. And it's just telling us how matter can move. Matter can move in this curved space-time. And so matter follows the shortest uh, sort of trajectories in the curved space-time. No. So we see the, the Earth moving around the Sun. Right, and right. That's not the shortest direction in space to go between two points uh, opposite to the Sun, for example. Right. But it's the shortest direction in space-time once we include time in the game. Ah. So uh, <laughs> it's counterintuitive. But. So uh, how has this concept of space-time enabled us to understand the universe? Uh, the, the cosmology, the beginning right, of the universe. Right. A fundamental fact is the universe is expanding. So this is the most uh, fundamental fact of cosmology. And this is possible because space-time is dynamic. So we needed this theory of dynamic space-time. And the expansion of the universe uh, also tells us that the universe was hotter in the past. And, um, so particles were excited at higher energies and so on in the past. Um, and things that happen at short distances in the past uh, make an imprint on long distances in the universe. So this expansion of the universe also unifies the small distances with uh -huh. the large distances. Uh -huh. 
So it's a very important fact in cosmology. How has the latest theories in physics, particularly string theory, affected our understanding of space-time? You have matter uh, on one hand and space-time on another, and they are completely different. So uh, matter is the thing that moves in space-time, mm -hmm. and while you're on there and you have space-time, um, which is which you describe in a purely geometric way. But string theory sort of implies a unification between space and matter. So small ripples of space-time, which is the graviton, quantum of gravity, um, is the same thing as a quantum of matter, so as, an, let's say, an electron. And both are described in terms of a single object, a string. So the string oscillating in different ways could be a quantum of space-time or a quantum of matter. So we're saying then that you can actually unify not just space and time, which is weird enough, right, right. but now you're unifying space-time yeah. with, with matter? With matter, yeah. yeah. That's the idea, that uh, the two things are basically related in string theory and are the same thing, a and, and the a same underlying thing. So, so the same thing manifests itself right. in two separate ways? Right. One right. is space-time through the graviton, which is the, yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the quanta, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the bit, of, uh, the quantum of, 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 gravity. of, of gravity in space-time, and the other is the, the, the in, for photon or the, or the, or the, right. uh, the, the of, electron of, of, in, in uh, matter. Yeah, so exactly. It's a, but, but they're related to the same thing. Yeah, the, the underlying physical reality of both is the same, it's this oscillating string. And what, that's one of the beautiful aspects of string theory, that it unifies space-time with matter. In order to describe the very early universe, you need this uh, unification between matter and gravity, because the expansion of the universe can create matter, can create particles, mm. and you need to describe both uh, in a common language. We just don't know if it's right yet. We don't know whether it's right. <laughs> but something that, y whatever will unify it, right. will probably have the elements of simplicity and beauty. That's our hope. <laughs> that, that has been uh, the lesson of history, if you wish. Unifying space and time is wild enough, but now we go beyond and unify space-time with matter? The solution seems more fantastical than the problem. Here's the extraordinary claim. All things that exist are expressions, manifestations of the same thing. How to explore such uncharted territory? When I hear that boundary-busting scientists are gathering in Iceland, hosted by the Foundational Questions Institute, I rearrange my life to be there. I meet physicist Fotini Marcopolo, who has radical ideas about space-time. What is interesting about space-time is that it is a dynamical plastic entity that it actually cares about what happens in it. The, what Einstein says is that if you move in space-time, you actually affect it. Anything that you do in space-time changes it. Einstein still makes a separation that there is a space-time and there is a matter yeah. and they affect each other. Yeah. But the thing is that the way that they affect each other mirror each other, each mm -hmm. other is, is, is by mirroring. That's what the Einstein equations say. Basically, the way the space-time curves equals what the matter does. <laughs> so the interesting question is, is it legal to actually make that separation between the space-time and the matter? So one possibility, for example, is that they're not really separate. Maybe there is something more fundamental that sometimes we understand as space-time and sometimes we understand as matter. And the reason that they seem to be doing the mirror image of each other is because they're really the same thing. Well, that's astounding. Well, I don't know if it is true, but it is a possibility, and it is one of the things that we are led to consider when we are faced with the question of how good is the notion of a space-time. Part of what Einstein touched upon is exactly that, that there are situations where the notion of a space-time is just not good. So if you were to fall into the black hole, you, you, we have some description that explains what would happen to you, but basically we do not know what would happen. So what it tells you is that when you fall into the black hole, you enter a regime where you have no idea what the notion of space-time is. And when we try to understand that, then we come back to these questions of have we been too simple? 
Have we made separations and simplifications in nature? This is space and this is matter that are not true. The corollary of this possibility is that space-time is not what we think it is, right? If, if that is true, then it is not really fundamental. So that then leaves you with a question of trying to understand the world without it. And you tell me how to think about it, because I do not know that many human beings that can understand the world without space-time. So, Fotini, is this my choice? Either space-time and matter are literally the same thing, or we must understand the world without space-time? To us mortals, neither makes sense, of course. Both are bizarre. Unless, could there be such deep underlying unity? That's the big question. And that's where physics leaves us for now. But now I need more, a search for meaning in space-time. And that means going beyond physics, with trepidation, into metaphysics. I turn to philosopher of cosmology, John Leslie, co-editor of the forthcoming book, The Puzzle of Existence. I think there's all sorts of different ways of defining time, and they could all be very useful. Aristotle thought that time measured motion, and he seemed to suggest that if you didn't have any motion, you couldn't have any time. I'd have thought it made sense to talk of a changeless situation which keeps on being there for a period of time. Maybe you couldn't measure the time with clocks because clocks are things which keep on changing. Okay. <laughs> but still, it seems to me to make sense to say, here's a situation which might be undergoing changes. It's not in fact undergoing changes, but still it's in time because it might be undergoing changes. Quite a popular view these days is that time is a dim dimension of a four-dimensional block, or at least, let's say, to avoid the word block, which has spatial connotations, which suggests that time is just a sort of space, let's say we have a four-dimensional continuum, and that time is one of the dimensions of that. I think that makes a lot of sense, and is very useful for a lot of purposes. I myself am a believer that there eternally exists a four-dimensional continuum. That time would, being a dimension of it. That would mean that, in a sense, things that are past have an independent existence. They're back there along the fourth dimension, and things in the future are forward there along the fourth dimension on this view, which is accepted by large numbers of physicists. But it, it, it is, in a sense, not a view that the, what is back in the fourth dimension or ahead in the fourth dimension is not in the realm of uncertainty or hypothetical or remembrance, but has, has a current reality. It's currently true that it's real then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not currently true that it's real now. <laughs> well, because now we are in, a, we are in this fourth dimension now where time is, moves. No, now is a particular cross-section of the four-dimensional continuum. But if, theoretically, one were an observer in a, in a fifth dimension... You could see the whole lot together. I hate to talk of simultaneous mm -hmm. existence mm -hmm. simply because some people might be misled. They might take me to be saying that absolutely is, every, is happening now. And it's clearly the case that not everything is happening at this very instant, because this instant on this view would be the particular cross-section of the four-dimensional continuum which we are, we are in. As somebody said in the famous graffiti, um, time is nature's way of ensuring that not everything happens all at once. <laughs> <laughs> time is nature's way of ensuring that not everything happens all at once. That's nice. One purpose of time? There must be others. The things most ordinary can be the things most bizarre. Before Einstein, space and time formed the stage on which the actors of reality, stuff made of matter and energy, acted out events. 
But Einstein showed that space and time were also actors. No, the same actor with two faces, one expressing space, one manifesting time. And the amazing thing is now... It's not that space and time are joined in space-time. It's that space and time are, at some deep level, literally the same thing. It may also be, astonishingly, that space-time and matter energy are, in some profound fundamental way, the same thing. Some speculate that space-time is not fundamental, but reflects a deeper reality as yet unknown. On explaining space-time, Einstein, appropriately, shall have the last word. Make it as simple as possible, but not simpler. That, for me, exemplifies closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.